Hello everyone, my name is Jake Gutierrez and I'm going to be presenting my Scope 2019 summary research that was supervised by Dr. Jacob Shum and it's called Generative Adversarial Network Rooms and Generative Graph Grammar Dungeons for The Legend of Zelda. So getting on to what motivated us for this research is that uh, this idea of procedurally generated content for video games and this content mainly comes in the form of le levels, dungeons, and also some content some as such as items and creatures so looking at rogue which is a video game from 1980 procedurally generated dungeons and every time you load up the game or go to a new dungeon you can expect a totally different dungeon from what you've seen before similar approach to no man's sky which procedurally generated worlds along with creatures generated with that planet and minecraft there's also this idea of procedurally generating infinite worlds and there's also mountains, rivers, oceans that go along with that. And there's also structures that can be procedurally generated as well. Um, looking at uh, previous work, uh, there's uh, Super Mario Brother levels were generated using an AI called a Generative Adversarial Network. And they were able to you know, generate these levels and also give them certain parameters to make them more difficult. And looking at the bottom left, uh, there was the same approach using GANs in uh, the context with Legend of Zelda. So on the right hand side we have this idea of context, um, generative graph grammars in, when, in, in context of dungeons. So we start this from this idea of a general dungeon, dungeon layout. So basically you go through room to room to room. And then you can expand upon that by adding all these other rooms to branch off and go through these different paths. And uh, this was expanded upon by Lavender and Thompson in a dissertation that used this idea of graph grammar in context with Legend of Zelda. So looking at the technologies behind this research was, you know, uh, as I mentioned, generative graph, uh, generative adversarial networks. So if you look at the architecture down there, uh, GANs are composed of two things called a generator and a discriminator. A generator generates a fake image, which then is passed on to a discriminator, which takes a fake image and the training data and sees whether or not the fake image is real or fake. So using that data from the discriminator, it goes to the generator and to generate more images like the training set. So in this case, the training in the example I, in the image of all these faces, the training set were celebrity faces, and the GAN was able to generate these celebrity faces very similar to the output. So these are all fake people. <coughs> so looking at context-free grammar, which is this idea of start from the starting point and adding on to it, much like Dorman's paper which is this fundamental idea for a graph grammar. So as you can see, we have this starting zero, and in our rules, we have a zero going to a one bracket zero bracket zero. So in the first iteration, we see that the zero is replaced with that rule. And in the second iteration, we see that the one is replaced with 11, and so on and so forth. And if we map this kind of generated sentence, long string of one zeros and brackets, you can make an algorithm to generate a fractal tree out of it, which is you know, the example I'm showing you right now. So now looking towards Legend of Zelda. Legend of Zelda has all these dungeons, which you have to explore, kill enemies, pick up keys to unlock doors to, generate, to uh, explore more of the dungeon. And then you also complete puzzles, defeat a boss, and then get the Triforce for that dungeon. And now, with this idea of generative graph grammar, we can uh, generalize what a, a dungeon would look like. So for instance, we have a starting room, an any room room, going to a key room, going to a locked door. So you need a key to unlock a door to go to the enemy room, and then finally the treasure room, or the Triforce room. So we have this rule for a start an enemy in this order that goes to this subgraph and this other subgraph. And there's kind of this random chance 
to apply this rule to the graph. As you see here, we choose one of the rules. So this start goes to this replaced with this start right here, and this enemy is replaced with this enemy room. So um, the yellow nodes symbolize symbols, which means that they're nodes that need to be replaced by terminators. Uh, so another example is that this SL needs to be replaced, which as you can see here, this SL is replaced with an SL terminator and this enemy room branching off that. So now that we have this idea of graph, how do we, a graph grammar, how do we make that into a dungeon? Well, we choose a starting point and then we go around each uh, edge of that room and place uh, an edge from the original graph into the dungeon. So each node's position is based off of a previous node so that this enemy room is replaced in retrospect to this starting point. So it kind of goes down here. As you can see in this video, it kind of branches out into this fully fledged dungeon. So based on the letter you see here, which is what we call the grammar, is that you know this is a start room, so it replaces an at sign, which symbolizes the player in this case, an enemy room, so it randomly generates enemies. Here's a soft block door. And here's the Triforce at the very end. Uh, with this approach, we can't generate all the edges in the node. So this, edges, this edge, for example, isn't represented in the final product. So now that we have this idea of putting gra graph to dungeon layout, we need to place rooms inside of it. So as you can imagine, we use a generative adversarial network to generate these rooms. So we have the original room data for The Legend of Zelda, and we put that into the GAN. And the GAN is able to generate output that is similar to that of the original input. And with this method, we can create unique and new rooms similar to the original. So now that we have uh, the rooms and the, with the, the rooms inside the generated layout, uh, the GAN doesn't always produce the a beatable room. So we use an A-star agent to essentially play the dungeon for us and to repair it if necessary. So if an A-star agent fails to find the Triforce, we'll look and see if there's visited and unvisited points of interest. And a point of interest could be anything like a door, a Triforce, a puzzle block, which you'll see later in the game, and a key. So if we find a visited and unvisited point of interest in a room, we draw a line of tiles towards between the two. So for instance, this could be a, this is a visited point of interest because you could go right in this room, explore it, but it can't go over to the side. So this is an unvisited point of interest. So we draw a line from here to here, as you can see in this example. And once we draw all of our lines that we need to for that iteration, we can resume the A-star algorithm using the previous data and have it beat the dungeon now because you're able to go through here and beat the dungeon. So we conducted a human subject study to determine whether or not our generated dungeons were comparable to the original dungeons. So there were 30 participants in total range uh, that were all from Southwestern University, whether they were students, faculty, or staff. And we had them play through three dungeons in a random order. So we made them play through the original dungeon, the fourth dungeon to be exact. As you can see from the right hand side, that's the exact dungeon. There was also a, uh, we made them play through a graph grammar, with, but with original rooms replacing the nodes. And then we have the graph grammar with the generative adversarial network rooms using AI. So after each dungeon, we made them rank the dungeon on a scale of 1 to 5 in terms of enjoyability, complexity, and challenge of enemies, and other stuff. We also had them compare previous dungeons using the same kind of categories. And then we have them write their comments on why they rank things in a certain way. So looking at this example of someone playing through the original dungeon, uh, you'll see that they... Uh, the engine is pretty primitive in comparison towards the legend of, original Legend of Zelda. So we have this at sign which symbolizes the player you're playing as and you use arrow keys to move around. And this is a turn-based type of game, so whenever you move, the enemies around you move after you. 
uh, same thing with attack. An attack counts as a turn, so if you move towards an enemy, they'll probably attack you back. So this player is exploring the dungeon right now. But as you see to the right, there's these hearts. So every time you're harmed by an enemy, you, your hearts go down. And once you run out of hearts, you die. When you die, uh, you get more chances to beat the dungeon. So, and when you try again, you'll see that you'll have more hearts and the amount of hearts that you can find increase. So this person died, so they have to restart the dungeon. And so once you get to the end of the dungeon, you'll find the Triforce and you can move on. So now looking at the results of our 1 to 5 rankings and categories, uh, we'll see that the original seems to be more enjoyable, but not significantly so. I see. See, I, the graph dungeon seemed to be less complex in terms of overall layout, but not significantly so. As you can see, the median score symbolized by the white dot is lower than the original and graph GAN, but it's not significant. And the only significant difference is in the graph GAN dungeons in terms of room organization. So now looking at uh, the ranked dungeons, uh, we'll s uh, see in this first example of enjoyment is that the original is more enjoyable but not significant so. So we're going to be, so in this graph we'll be mainly looking at these blue bars right here, which signalize how they ranked. So original had more most rankings. Uh, graph GAN was most complex, which was significantly more different, more most ranks. Uh, the original was most novel, but not significantly so, but it was still close to Graph GAN, as you can see by the similar rankings right here. And the original and Graph GAN are tied in map challenge, but not for least, which is an interesting thing. I see the Graph probably had a significant difference in least rankings. Now looking at uh, chaotic in terms of kind of the kind of organization of the rooms, the graph game was most chaotic, but not significantly so. So now looking at our typed responses from d dungeon number four, we'll see that people like that they had to wait later in the level to get the water walking thing that helped them get further in the level. So this water walking thing is unique to dungeon number four as it was first introduced in the overall game. And that item you have to, again, like have to work towards and then you have to kind of backtrack your way to a certain point to be able to use that item. As explained in this comment, I like the need to backtrack through a couple of the dungeon rooms for necessary items if you didn't find them at first. Along with the so in the graph one, we see that the responses, uh, they didn't really like the overall layout. So I didn't enjoy how simple the dungeon was overall. And the map layout was very simple, not very novel. An important thing to note here is that the graph and graph GAN uh, use the same generative, generative graph grammar techniques. So in, in the room layout should be the same or comparable. But in graph GAN, people mention uh, someone mentioned this one generally brought a smile to my face as I played it. It felt more like a Zelda sequel dungeon because of its variety in room layout. And on, to this, on, on the same thing, the rooms typically had symmetrical designs to them which made them feel organized. So people really liked the novelty and variety of the GAN rooms. So now we measure the novelty which is you know uniqueness with z on a scale of 0 to 1, 0 being not novel at all to one being completely novel. So looking at this first part, we compare the dungeons to each other. The ANOVA indicates significant difference in room novelties, and Tuki's HD indicates that Graph and Graph GAN are significantly more novel than original. As you can see, the average room novelty is higher between Graph and Graph GAN than the original dungeons. An uh, important thing to note here is that Dungeon 4 novelty was 0.29, which is higher than original Dungeon's average. The ANOVA indicates for this section, which is comparing all the rooms to each other, ANOVA indicates significant difference between collections of all rooms, 
and Tukey's AC indicates graph and graph GAN significantly different than original. As you can see, the averages for these graph and graph GAN are significantly higher than the original rooms. So now looking at the unique rooms, we can see that there are there's less unique original rooms and less graph rooms. While we did pull graph rooms from the same data set as the original rooms, um, they were manipulated by the post-processing processes, so they, there were drawn floor tiles on some of them, which is why the number is different. We also, we also like to notice that the unique graph GAN rooms, uh, there's more of them in comparison to the graph and original rooms. However, there is no significant difference in collections of unique rooms, and the gra original and graph had many duplicates, as you can imagine. So kind of wrapping up our results, the added complexity of rooms from GAN complicates the overall layout. As you kind of notice that the gra just the graph dungeon, even though that the graph grammar process was the same, the GAN adds this layer of complexity to the overall layout of the dungeon. Uh, we also like to note that the GAN produces more novel rooms compared to original rooms. As with our novelty table that you saw earlier, um, yeah, we can, there's more novel rooms in GAN rather than original. The added benefit of GAN rooms is that you can produce an effectively infinite supply of rooms. Another thing to note is that original dungeon number four is a very novel dungeon as it introduced a raft object. Uh, people really like seem to really like this dungeon a lot. And with that in mind, we saw that the scores were similar in some categories. So the graph GAN similar is very similar to the original dungeon. And we, not, an awesome thing about this is that we were able to generate dungeons similar to expert handcrafted ones in the original. So looking towards the future, uh, we'd like a more data-driven level generation approach. So instead of using a generative graph grant approach where we have to hand write out all the rules Code, or manually code in rules for the graph grammar and have the starting graph grammar uh, linear graph. I'd like to expand the scope of the GAN to generate the overall dungeon structure. So we'd be able to use the data from the original so that we can generate room layouts that are more closer to the original, including nodes, uh, including the adjacencies of the original. And we like to introduce a conditional GAN to the uh, room generation process, which means that we can generate room type different room types based on parameters. So we can give the GAN a bunch of different types of rooms and be able to get rooms that are the same type out of it. So if we need an enemy room, we can tell the GAN to generate an enemy room and have it placed to enemies instead of going back and placing enemies like what we did in our research. This will lead to more you know, a date more data driven approach so that the enemies are more closer to the original. And additionally, we like to create a game closer to the original. So using a different engine, we can create a more streamlined game rather than this kind of primitive turn-based game. So I'd like to thank you for tuning in and watching this presentation. I'd also like to thank Southwestern University for uh, the scope summer research program for funding my research. Uh, if you have any questions, you can contact me at guter8 at southwestern.edu or Dr. Shrum at shrum2 at southwestern.edu. You can also visit this website for videos, source code, or a written paper at the URL or at the QR code. Thank you.